So the opening day of free agency is in the books in the National Basketball Association and it couldn't have gone smoother if your name is Liam Jenkins. So yesterday in This Week in Philadelphia Sports, I decided to make light of the sign and trade rumours surrounding Jimmy Butler by saying this. Gone, oh, well, they can sign Jimmy Butler. No, it doesn't work like that. Sign and trades don't work and I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. so ignore any tag and trade talk or sign and trade talk it's people who play NBA 2k a little bit much that went well yeah not my finest moment maybe I will instead of sticking to soccer stick to football but today is not that day there are about 77 moves made by the Sixers yesterday so someone's got to break them all down so here are my takes on everything we saw from Elton Brand and his super team during the opening day of free agency the day started off in a less than favorable manner the Sixers lost out on JJ Reddick to a team that maybe overpaid him the New Orleans Pelicans and I don't think they did there were rumors coming out earlier that day that Reddick said that he wanted to retire as a Philadelphia 76 and if I'm honest I've said this before in videos and podcasts where stuff only comes out if people want it out there it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if Reddit was just trying to push that momentum forward a little bit maybe gain some traction see if he could up the offer from New Orleans and if the Pelicans really wanted him to build around bearing in mind the offseason they've had and that he wants to retire elsewhere they've gone up their bid so if they were really locked in they probably haven't overpaid they've overpaid in comparison to what the Sixers would have paid and have probably advised against doing so. The loss is a big one. Reddick set new career highs in scoring in both seasons with the Sixers. Looking back at that Tobias Harris trade, maybe being so prompt to get rid of Landry Shamet will come back to sting them because Shamet, as we all know, went on to have a ferocious rookie season from beyond the arc and losing out on JJ Reddick, someone they couldn't sign to a long term deal and help generate the next big shooting guard in Philadelphia. It's a big loss, and now they need to find shooting from elsewhere. Reddick helped provide the acquisite floor spacing needed to facilitate the game of Ben Simmons. Someone that can't shoot the ball, refuses to shoot the ball at this stage from outside. With him currently out of the picture, and there being no real notable replacement as of the making of this video, it leaves the team with some interesting questions. Because if you're going to have a starting five of what currently looks to be Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Al Horford, Tobias Harris, and maybe Josh Richardson, it doesn't give you enough, I don't think, in terms of floor spacing and a perimeter threat. At least a reliable perimeter threat. So maybe, I mean, it's very early days. We know it's only day one, but I feel like the team still have more to do on that front. Next up, the announcement that Tobias Harris signed a five-year deal, $180 million dollars big time move for the Sixers if they couldn't give Jimmy Butler a max deal or refuse to for whatever reason which we will get onto a bit later in the video. Retaining Tobias Harris just made a lot of sense for this team. They needed that third pinwheel to they needed that third cornerstone to build around. You've got Ben Simmons who reported he's working on an extension. Embiid is here for the long run. You needed someone else. Then you can then develop outside of that. So Tobias Harris to me made perfect sense. He's still 26 years old. And while he only shot 32% from three since joining the Sixers, this is a blessing in disguise when it comes to losing Jimmy Butler. I don't think Harris was ever properly utilised in Philadelphia. His usage rating was down drastically after joining. Guy that averaged 20 points per game as an LA Clipper. I think now with Butler out of the picture, he'll be allowed to be a bit more dominant with the ball in his hands, a little bit less passive and demand some more attention. Harris is a fantastic two-way player. But not only that, it's going to take some pressure off Harris as well. The guy is 26 years old and has currently played for eight different NBA team so he's a complete journeyman and it's such a shame because he has been that fringe level guy where he's so close to demanding a max deal but never quite had the sustenance and the ability to gel with his teammates in order to generate that kind of money and I think now he's in Philadelphia Brett Brown's seen enough of it Elton Brand has certainly seen enough to offer him that money and now that he can build around Embiid around Simmons I just think we're going to see a different Tobias Harris as I said the guy's 26 years old to suddenly think that that is the ceiling of his game and he's not going to go beyond that is absurd he's so young in his career he's got a lot more to offer and if he can really start to establish that chemistry with the players around him and the team can start playing to his strengths ball movement is critical in Tobias Harris's game getting down there spacing the floor and finding those wide open windows to be lethal from downtown I just don't think that current lineup that entered the playoffs I know we hear the excuses all the time they just didn't have enough time to gel with one another 
find those strengths, play to them, and really get the best out of one another. Now you're going to have five years of Tobias Harris. You're going to have a similar window with Simmons, a similar window with Embiid, and of course their next signing, he was Al Horford. If there's one thing the Sixers lacked last year, it was a depth off the bench. If it was a second thing, it was a backup center to Joel Embiid. The minute Embiid left the floor, everything just kind of disappeared with it. Any kind of defensive momentum went, and any lead that they had would just disintegrate on the spot, partly because of a lack of offensive contributions and partly because they were unable to stop the leaking on defense. Horford, at his age of 33, will not only bring veteran leadership to this team, but will also help provide valuable backup minutes to Joel Embiid. If Embiid does need a rest, let's be brutally honest here, he's not exactly been the most reliable player in the NBA when it comes to minutes and fatigue and that sort of thing. Horford's going to have a significant impact here. A five-time All-Star, and the other interesting thing is that he's got that versatility to play power forward as well. So again, back to that starting lineup picture, all of a sudden, Embiid, Horford, Simmons, and Harris in the same line. Lineup, that can get filthy and it just adds that extra bit of anchor to the Sixers defense someone in an age where teams are getting smaller and trying to get things outside and open up their shooters it makes sense to combat that with getting bigger defensively guarding the rim going for those rebounds knowing that if only 40% of shots are dropping then surely your rebound percentages will sky up so it's an interesting era to be in Elton Brand being very forward thinking did they overpay for Al Horford I think it's debatable, but they're at the end of the day protecting their investment in Joel Embiid because if he goes down, there is so much pressure on him. It's not like we can go, all right, let's give Joel Embiid a little bit of a lighter workload tonight because we know we've got X player here to take that strain off. They don't have that. They finally get that level of luxury without Horford, someone that has been a starter throughout his career, a five-time All-Star. Also, let's not forget, someone that shot 36% from beyond the arc last season, so he does bring shooting value as well. Scott signed a two-year extension and the hive can stand up averaging 7.8 points per game shooting 40% from three he had three different double digit games during the playoff run he just became a valuable bench piece and again back to my earlier point the Sixers severely lacked bench depth last year so I think adding Mike Scott presence back into the equation bringing that grittiness that toughness Philadelphia fell in love with that guy because a, he ain't no bitch, and B, just the way he carries himself, it is that gritty, hard-nosed, I'm gonna outwork you level of basketball, something which certainly disappeared the minute the backup stepped onto the floor. It was all young and developmental, and guys like Zaire Smith, who we still need to see more from. The regional manager is here to stay. I think it's key for the culture. It's just a good move for the franchise. It's cheap, it's cheerful, it's productive, there's room to grow, and more importantly, it keeps that bench depth a little bit above average, which average would probably still not be the word I'd used to describe it last season. It was somewhat way below that. Scott can come on in a pinch and make sure you seal those late games to make sure that you put the nail in the coffin, get it out of harm's way, keep it out of reach, and then you kind of take your foot off the gas. And it's been rare to find that with the Sixers team. Going back the last couple of years, how many times are the Sixers up by 12, 15 points at half time and it comes down to those final 10 seconds in the fourth quarter? They don't know how to protect leads. I think Mike Scott is going to go a long way in helping them. And finally, they lost out to Jimmy Butler. And obviously, the rumor was that they didn't offer him a max deal or couldn't. And if you're Jimmy Butler, I don't think you can get too annoyed because if you want to be the key point of a team, the focal point of a team, you're not going to be that so long as Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and arguably even Tobias Harris are around. So from his perspective, I understand it. A little bit hypocritical, a little bit annoying. He certainly plays up to the lights. And I think if there was anyone that would have collapsed the team, it may have been Jimmy Butler. But on the inverse of that, he was absolutely invaluable. And the glue that kept that team together during a playoff run when everyone else seemed to literally disappear. So it's a tough loss to take, but I understand it from both sides. It just wasn't the right long-term fit. The Sixers made the move to push them into contention and win. Now, they certainly did that. One can argue if it wasn't for a quadruple bouncing Kawhi Leonard 3 to seal the deal in Toronto, the Sixers would be the NBA champions right now, given how the rest of it all played out. That move to acquire Jimmy Butler paid off, but now they've got to build around the team that they've got and keep a core. You weren't going to do that by locking up money with Jimmy Butler. So what they did was sign and trade him as opposed to letting him go for nothing, and they get back 25-year-old Josh Richards. He's coming off his best season yet. Yeah, he averaged 16 points, 4 assists, and around 3.5 rebounds per game. There's a lot of room to grow there for Richardson. He's a good two-way player. He's got to fit in well with this Sixers roster. And he shot over 
over 35% from three, so one can't complain too much. Richardson has the ability to start. He's a kind of fringe guy at the moment. Will he grow into a starter? A long-term piece to build around. I don't know. That's what we're going to see moving forward. But is this team, compared to this time, maybe Friday or Saturday night, better or worse? And as of right now, overall building standpoint, better. From a winning now standpoint, worse. I think it is a double-edged sword. On one hand, you've got the fact that you've now got Al Horford and Tobias Harris locked up for over four years at a minimum. You're going to have Joel Embiid there for that time. Ben Simmons, if he signs his extension, will be there as well. That's four guys you can perennially build around. And maybe after that, that window, that is when you start grooming the talent like Zaire Smith. That's when you draft the backup to Joel Embiid, the long-term heir to the shooting guard throne. So it makes sense. The Sixers have their call. Many other teams in this league will go for two all-stars and then it drops massively. The Sixers aren't doing that. That is a very strong call. One that is now balanced and experienced and youth, but the other aspect of it is that it is becoming a bit one-dimensional. There is no long-term shooting threat anymore. Redick is gone. Shemet was traded. The Sixers drafted defensively, which is fantastic, but it doesn't help their offensive production. And if Ben Simmons refuses to shoot, don't have someone that can space the floor. There's only so many threes Joel Embiid and Al Horford can pour in. Richardson wasn't fantastic. Harris wasn't fantastic from three-point range last year. They've got to find more reliability if they're to keep up with the fast pace of the modern-day NBA offense. And I think that is going to be an interesting focal point point moving forward. Are they going to go for someone like Danny Green or Seth Curry? I wouldn't bet against it and I'd certainly be all for that kind of move but only time will tell. Let me know what you think of the moves guys. Have the Sixers improved or gotten worse in day one of free agency? Drop them down below and don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this sort of content. From myself Liam Jenkins you can follow me on Twitter at Liam Jenkins PSN. I'll see you soon.